pre uh, present in progress. Uh, sorry, uh, in this talk, I will present tools that are good to know. That is Dr. Mike. JIT here, REN targets orderly uh, and so on. She will also report whether making an R package out of everything is always a good idea. After this presentation, you will have learned tips, tips and tricks to apply as you like in your R projects. I hope everyone of you will learn at least one new thing. Over to you, Dr. Mayer. So I was muted, <laughs> sorry. So yeah, thank sorry. you, John Matisse, for the introduction. And my talk is entitled, Please Draw Me a Project. And I'm joining from Nancy. Today is actually a sunny day, but often we have a sky, like a gray sky, like on the picture. And I'm delighted to attend Saturday in Nairobi. So thanks a lot for the um, invitation and organization. It's my first Saturday conference. So um, in Cape Town in 2018, I gave a talk where I wore a hard hat during the more technical parts of my talk. Today, I don't. Uh, have a costume, so I'm sorry about that. Um, later in 2018, I gave a shortened version of the same talk um, in the Cardiff. Um, and in Paris, in, uh, so I attended the Saturday Paris um, conference in uh, 2019. And I'm actually wearing the t-shirt from that conference, but you only see a black t-shirt, so you have to believe me. Um, and today I will share some tools and tips around managing your app project. I had some slides introducing myself, but I don't need to um, go through them because I was introduced by John Matisse. And my slide deck is online. Um, I've put the link in the uh, Zoom chat. So it's Saturday, iPhone, Nairobi, iPhone, mail, .netlify.app. And the goals of my talk are, uh, so really the goal is that every one of you learns at least one new thing. And I have several sections. The first will be about basic principles for our projects and how to protect your projects from external changes, what structure to use for your project and how to run your project. And why am I giving advice on our projects? So that's not, so the title of my talk is, um, so um, please run me a project So in uh, The Little Prince, the book, there is um, a quote where The Little Prince asks, please run me a sheep. So that's not exactly what they asked for, like a project, not a sheep. But I think that um, advice on project uh, can really improve the life of anyone um, touching or reading your project, like someone reading the result, or you that needs to uh, run the projects again in a, in a few weeks. So this all helps reproducibility. It's also good because there is always something you can improve uh, in your R projects, in the way you work with R. Sadly, it also means there is always something you can procrastinate on. So that's something we all need to be aware of. Um, but sometimes we just need to do the work and not improve the workflow. And why listen to me? So I'm actually not regularly in charge of analysis. So that's a bad point for choosing this topic. But I try to keep up to date with our news. And this is how I gathered some uh, tools and tips for this presentation. So starting with some basic. Basics doesn't mean it's easy. Basic means it's fundamental and very important. But that's, uh, these are all uh, things to learn. And my main source of advice here is Jenny Bryan. I ended, identify with the quote by Sharla Gelfand, uh, who said, everything I know is from Jenny Bryan. And just a note that Sharla Gelfand said that after um, a talk, and Sharla himself is a great source of information, so you could uh, go watch uh, this talk by Sharla Gel Gelfand, which was, don't repeat yourself, talk to yourself, repeated reporting in the R universe. But coming back to the uh, phrase, uh, everything I know is from Jenny Bryan, it's something that uh, enough people identify with. Um, so that there is a logo, and on this logo, there is a computer on fire, and I will explain later why there is a computer on fire when there is this um, logo. When you start a, a new project in R, like maybe an analysis, scientific article, a report, uh, you might think of your project as a garden where you really um, try to spend time caring for your flowers. But the bad thing with this analogy would be that you cannot really um, take a garden somewhere else. But I was very happy to see a tweet about a competition in Japan uh, where people uh, build beautiful gardens on little trucks. And, that's really how I'd want my art projects to be, like a beautiful, but also very portable. 
And so to, and, and to come back to the idea of laptop on fire, during a talk, uh, Jenny Bryan said, if the first line of your script is either set WD, a path that's only on your computer, or RM, where the argument list is equal to LS, to well, everything, then Jenny Bryan, Jenny Bryan will come into your office and set your computer on fire. So this is quite uh, scary. And in a, in a blog post in particular, she explains why, how you could um, not do that. And so the first idea is that you should have five paths that are related uh, to, relative to the root of the, your project. So for instance, if I add a CSV file in my Saturday Nairobi folder, and it's an, in the subfolder data, I shouldn't use reader read CSV and then all the paths from home, mail, documents, conferences, Saturday Nairobi, because this structure of folders only exists on my computer. If I give you my Saturday Nairobi folder and you try to run the code, it will fail. And um, to also uh, illustrate the idea, so Alison Horst, who makes a beautiful illustration of R packages and, and other things relating to R, made an illustration illustrating the here package. And on the left, you have a very scary path, like with um, spiders and set WD everywhere. On the right, you have a beautiful path with flowers and the here package. So what's, what is this all about? So the here package is a package by Kirill Muller, and you need to use it to have something at the root of your project. Like if you use RStudio and R Proj file, so you don't need to do anything. If you don't need to use RStudio and you don't use Git, you can have a .ear file as a project root, and, once, and it's an empty file. And once you, you have that, you can use the here here function and it gives you the path to, uh, to something related to the root of your project. So uh, in my Armagnon slides, I run here here and it gives me the path to my Saturday Nairobi folder on my computer. If I, if I run, I run uh, here here data, it gives me the path to the data folder of the Saturday Nairobi uh, folder. So if I want to read the CSV file that's in the data folder, in my Saturday uh, folder, I can use here, here, data, cool stuff, .csv. And this is really cool because it works from anywhere inside my Saturday Nairobi folder. So I can use this code in my, maybe a readme file that's at root, or maybe I have a subfolder with reports and a script, then it would work from there too. So it work on your computer, it would also work anywhere in my, in my folder. And then how not to use uh, RM list equal to LS. The idea is you should always start fresh. You should restart R regularly and without fear. If you somehow have the idea that there is something in your environment, maybe a package loaded, some object that would disappear if you restart R and you're afraid of that, this means that uh, you haven't written everything you should in your script because the source code should be um, enough to recreate everything you, you want. And you should never save and reload um, the dot R data, which uh, you might know is a default setting in R Studio. So the default is a bad option, uh, but there is a use this um, function to use this use blank state function. So if you run this once on your computer, it sets your R Studio preference to never save or restore R data, R data on exit startup. So that's a very good, uh, function to to know about, and this uh, two ideas so the path the pa using relative paths and um, and restarting regularly. Um, this is a project oriented workflow, which is presented in particular in a blog post by Jenny Bryan, and it's really a way of working that will change your life, and it pairs well with using the use this package. For instance, maybe creating a project with the use this um, uh, create project. Um, Function. Then, um, and so in Shakespeare, in Rome, sorry, in uh, Roman Julia, in Shakespeare, there is this uh, quote that we often see uh, that we, uh, that, sorry, <laughs> that which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. So, this is a cool quote, but that's not true when you're writing code. So there is a slide deck by Jenny Bryan with uh, tips uh, um, about naming your, your files, which is very useful. Your file name should be machine readable. So if your name is mail, two dot on the E like me, you shouldn't name your um, files with your name. Then it should be human readable. So the idea is that when you see a file name, you as a human should have um, 
basic idea of what's inside. And uh, it should work well with default ordering. For instance, if you have dates in your file names, it's uh, good to use year, month, uh, day as a way to uh, call them. Because this way, when you order the files alphabetically, they are also ordered by time. Just to know that I can't see anyone, so everyone has their camera off. So if there is any problem, please tell me. Or if someone wants to turn the camera on, then that's a, <laughs> a good idea. And, and also about naming uh, things, so not only files, but also variables, for instance. When you want to write readable code, you try to use variable names that are sort of informative. And uh, this week, Jenny Bryan tweeted, I didn't expect programming to involve so much time studying a thesaurus. So, <laughs> um, and just a small public service announcement. Um, please take time to think. If someone uh, came and uh, put your uh, computer on fire, what would you lose? So hopefully you would only lose the machine, <laughs> be a bit afraid, but you wouldn't lose um, all your files because you have a backup somewhere. So it's important to have a backup. Uh, but then, um, not only with the idea of backup, your project will evolve over time. You're static one day and then you're, you're improving it. So how do you keep track of um, changes uh, to be able to come back to the to your project at the given state, for instance? So to control the version, you have an approach that could be to have dates in file names or something like adding final, final, final in the names of your files, or you could use version control. And the most popular tool for version control these days is Git. And learning it is not easy, but it's uh, it's worth it. And it's also not something specific to R, which is good. You could use it uh, when you don't use R, but it's uh, very useful when you are using R. And the idea with Git is that it allows you to try things out and to come back to a previous version and to understand past uh, changes. So in uh, there is an XKCD comics by Rhonda Manro about Git right you have um, three people in front of a computer and one person says this is git it tracks collaborative work on projects through a beautiful distributed graph theory tree model another person asks cool how do we use it and the first person answers no idea just memorize these child comments and type them to sync up if you get errors save your work elsewhere delete the project and don't on the fridge copy so accurate learning it is not um, always that awful, but um, the idea to um, delete the project and don't on a fresh copy base sometimes happen when things uh, go wrong. But more, uh, more simply, so what is Git? So here is an illustration of several states of a sheep, like baby sheep, young sheep, adult sheep, and a box. And between them, there are arrows. And with Git, the idea is that you can save a snapshot of your uh, of your files of your sheep at uh, uh, any any time you want, and you can um, you can see the difference between two states. And when you do the snapshot, so if you arrive at the young sheep state, you write an informative commit message such as um, "put uh, now the sheep is uh, standing" or something like that, like something informative. So that's the idea of Git, and also the idea is that you can. Uh, go from the young sheep here to the adult sheep or to the box. So you can explore different uh, ways to do your project. And these are called branches in Git, but really that you can try different different things and still have their state saved in their history. So here are some Git commands roughly um, explained. So with Git add, you start tracking a file. And if there are files you never want to track, for instance, maybe files that contain some sort of secret, you could uh, list them in the Git ignore file. With Git commit, you save a change in the history. With Git pull and Git push, you uh, sync up your local version with some remote version, maybe a GitHub repository. And with Git checkout hyphen B, you create a branch, which is a way for you to explore before maybe uh, deciding that this approach is indeed the best, or maybe that's not the best approach. And so good, but where, where do we use this Git comments? So here are my preferences. Sometimes I don't even uh, leave R to use Git comments. So with the use this package, you can, for instance, start using Git in a project with this use Git sorry, with the use Git function, you can create a GitHub repository with the use GitHub function. There is also the GERT package, sorry, that has a um, lower uh, level interface to Git. So with GERT, you can push, you can commit, you can pull. Then if you use RStudio, there is a Git window where you can click 
uh, and you don't have to go too far away from R. Sometimes I use a command line for commands that I am ever either copy pasting from Stack Overflow or the rare commands that I know by heart. And uh, I don't use a graphical interface uh, for Git because maybe I never do anything complicated enough to um, um, need that, but you can use, for instance, Git Kraken, or I've been told by the Git interface in VS Code uh, is uh, very good. I've listed some resources about Git, and uh, since my slides are online, I'm not going to describe them now. So until now, what we've learned from uh, like Jenny Bryan Wisdom is to isolate our projects and to restart R regularly, to name files well, and to use version control. And I've also listed even more wisdom uh, by Jenny Bryan collaborators. And now I wanted uh, in this section to explain how to protect your project from external changes. So another scary story where no one is coming and setting your computer on fire. But imagine you have written beautiful data wrangling with a function called my favorite function from the package package. And you update packages on your computer, you come back to your script and you realize that in the new version of package, there is no longer the my favorite function package. So this was actually a good idea by the package authors because uh, they have another function that's better, but for you, it's a bad, uh, it's bad news because you would need to update your script because it's now broken. And sometimes you don't have time to do that. You just want your script to keep working as it was. So the idea is that you can actually store uh, project dependencies, like encapsulating your project, like having one set of package version for one given project and in another project using other package version. And an important tool for doing that is the RUNF package by Kevin Ashi. It's the successor of Packrat by the same author. If, you use, if you've used Packrat before, RUNF uh, does the same thing, but is uh, better. So how do you use runs in a, in a project? It's actually very simple. So you start using, using it with uh, the runs init function. After that, you install and remove packages as you would normally. And what's a bit more difficult maybe is to uh, remember to regularly run the function called snapshots, the run snapshot function. What this does is storing the metadata about the packages in a file called run.log. So what is metadata of dependency? It means that in this file, all the packages that you use in the project are saved and their version and where they come from. So maybe it's version 1.0 from CRAN or it's version blah, blah, blah from GitHub. So these kind of things. And it means that if you take the folder with your project and you give it to your colleague or you give it to yourself on a new machine, to reinstall the correct versions of all packages, all you need to do is running the run restore function. So that's very handy. Now, if you want to encapsulate even more things, so maybe you want to, to, to have a fixed R version operating system, like everything, you might be interested in, in Docker. There is a good introduction to Docker by Colin Fay. And also recently there was at Our Ladies Brisbane um, a meetup about Docker by Malindrier Damaratni. And this, uh, this talk, Introduction to Using Docker for Reproducibility in R, has been recorded and materials are online. So in short, to protect your project from external changes, I'd recommend listing the dependency of the project. And the easiest way to get started is the run package. So now, uh, what file structure to use uh, for your project? How to uh, uh, tidy things up inside your, your project? So in your project, you probably have some data and, or either data or code that gets data from a database or some sort of website. Then you have some code that manages the data, uh, fits a model to the data maybe, and you are, you are willing to have some output, maybe that's a graph, a report, so that kind of things. Now, how do you um, tidy all these things? So the file structure for your project should be consistent. Hopefully you can start a new project automatically, and maybe you want that to look uh, like a package or maybe not. There is uh, so there are many packages for creating projects, but one of them is a project template by Kenton White. I've never used it, uh, but I really like the blog post "Love for Project Template" by Hilary Parker because the criteria she lists as reasons for liking this uh, package are very good um, things to have in any uh, package, any tool that helps you with 
uh, project structure. So she wrote, routine is your friend. It's easier to start somewhere and then customize rather than start from the ground up. Reproducibility should be as easy as possible. Finding things should uh, also be as easy as possible. So that's all very good. Um, and uh, and some debate that there is sometimes is should an analysis be an R package? And I, I will further list um, scenarios where it's a good idea to make an R package. So if you want to store functions and data that you are using in several projects, not only one, but several of them, then making an R package is an uh, excellent idea. And there are many great resources out there to learn how to make an R package. In particular, the tutorial by Shia Kagyoki uh, that she gave at Ali Disney Ruby recently, and the um, tutorial has been recorded and materials are online. Then maybe you can also make a package to store something like an RStudio project template, or maybe a package that has functions for recreating a, a project structure. So that's a good idea too, like without a doubt. Now, storing your project as a package, then that's a maybe. Maybe it's a good idea, maybe it's not. So what do I mean by analysis project as a package? The idea is that you would list dependencies in description, have the functions in the R folder, maybe documented in the man folder. You would have data maybe in the data folder or data row folder. Your analysis could be vignette, so R markdown files, and you could have an informative uh, readme. So that would be the basic structure. The advantages of using a package to store your, store your analysis is that it allows you to either reuse or refresh your package development skills. And you could reuse tools that are made for package development like DevTools and use this. And this approach is the idea of a compendium and was in particular described in the paper Packaging Data Analytical Work Reproducibly Using R and Friends by Ben Murray, Carl Bottiger, and Link Coleman. Um, so in 2018, but maybe I already said the year. Um, and uh, if you um, create your project as a package, there are specific tools that you can use. The R tools package by Ben Marek uh, can help you set up a new compendium. If you use a whole punch package by Cathy Graham uh, with the, so what it does is it interfaces uh, the binder project. And if you use that, then you can add a batch to your, uh, to the readme of your compendium. And it allows the reader to play with your code online in a new um, RStudio um, uh, instance. It actually works without the compendium structure, but I think it, it's uh, still uh, meant to be used with, with compendiums. And if you also, uh, so if you have your, your project as a package and your analyses are vignettes, uh, and it's public, uh, then you can use the R universe um, project by Jaron Orms at our open side that uh, will allow you to publish your analysis because with R universe, you have the universe with all your packages and it renders the vignettes in one tab of that, then that would be a way for you to have a new level to point uh, people to uh, when they want to read your analysis. Then there are still opponents to the idea of project as a package, in particular as a blog post project as an R package, an okay idea by Matt McBain. And in particular in this um, blog post where, where he wrote was, my response to advocates of project as a package is you are wasting precious time making the wrong packages. Instead of shoehorning your work into the package development domain with all the loss of fidelity that entails, why aren't you packaging tools that create a smooth dev tools use this style experience for your own domain? So that's uh, a bit harsh, but that's still good to keep in mind if you are hesitating what approach to use for your project. So to uh, conclude on the file structure for your project, I think that what file structure you use is really up to you and your teammates, but it's important to have a basic structure that's consistent over time and uh, also to have a way to automatically create it. It could be some sort of project skeleton that you have somewhere and just copy paste when you start a new one. It could be as simple as that. And the idea is to make reproducibility easier. Now, um, how do you run your project? So you have your resources, you have your scripts, how you, do you get the analysis um, output? And of course you could run code line by line, but that wouldn't be uh, necessarily uh, very um, handy to do that. So if you 
if your project is one or if you are Magdon reports, maybe uh, all you need to do is a neat pattern, for instance, or the R Magdon render function. So running that regularly, but maybe you need something more complex. So I am going to discuss two cases with one package for each case. So maybe you want to optimize a pipeline or you want to track versions of an analysis. So at both the input and output. So up to optimize a pipeline, I'm going to um, present the targets package by Wellendo and to track version of an analysis over time, I'm going to present the orderly package by Rich Fitzjohn. So targets uh, by Wellendo is a package that um, they just see the relationship between the pieces of your project. So say in your project, you have raw data, you transform it into data, you fit the data with a model, and then you make a figure of the uh, mo model fit. Then if you only change the model, you only need to uh, redo the figure. You don't need to recompute the data from the raw data. And that kind of logic, so what needs to be rerun when something changes, is something that Target does for you. Target only performs necessary computation when you change some things, and that can uh, lead to um, a lot of, um, of gain of resources and time. Yeah, Target is part of the urban size suite of packages, so um, it has um, been reviewed uh, at um, Arbensai, and it's a successor of Drake by the same uh, author. Uh, so how does it work? At the core of a targets project, of a targets folder, you have a file called underscore targets.r, and in that file that you uh, write your, your yourself, you can uh, load packages. You can load functions. So if you've written function in the R folder, for instance, you can source this script and you define targets. So what are targets? This is uh, key to um, understand. So here is a targets definition in an example from the targets manual. So we have a list of targets. So first, so all of them use the tar target function to be defined. So first one, um, so it has a name, raw data file. Then there is the path to the file related, related, relative to the root of the project and the argument format is set to file. So this one is a bit special. It tracks the um, raw data file. Then there is a target called raw data, and it's defined by our code, by the uh, code read CSV with the path to the raw data file. Then we have our target called data, and it's defined by our code as well, both so by filtering the raw data. And the filter function that is here comes from the deployer package. The deployer package has been loaded previously in the targets.r file. And there are two uh, last targets, ist and fit, that are defined by our code that uses functions that are specific to the project. This function has been sourced previously in the targets.r file. So this is how you would serve when you write an, a targets package, you define the different pieces and you write them uh, in this list. So how does it run? So to build um, a, a targets package, you run the tar make function. If you need to destroy everything at some point, there is a, a function for that, the so tar destroy function. And what's very useful with targets, well, many parts of this are useful, is that you can understand your pipeline with functions such as tag limbs. So tag limbs uh, show you, shows you a network of dependencies between the, the, the pieces of your project. So in the case of the example I, I've shown, you have the raw data file that becomes raw data, that becomes data, and data become, uh, is used in fit and in the uh, is and target. And so in, it's a very simple one, but sometimes you see people sharing um, pipelines that are very complicated and it's very cool to be able to, to visualize them uh, this way. So how to get started with targets? So manual of targets, so it's a book done um, book. It's uh, very uh, well done. And there was, if you prefer learning with a video, so there was recently a talk by Wellendo at the I user group of Lille. Uh, our targets, and I would recommend starting with a small project. So I know that in my case, I read the manual, maybe I watched a video or two, but I, I, things become, became much clearer for me when I wrote a small uh, target project. And that's really my current level. I'm not an advanced targets user. Um, and targets is not a package on its own. There is a whole ecosystem of packages around target, uh, target opia, 
that has, uh, for instance, a package for using targets with stand, another one for using uh, targets with uh, JAGs. And how do you keep up with targets, given that it's a, a package that, that is uh, developed very actively, so you could watch the GitHub repository of targets. You could follow Will Ender on Twitter. I would recommend subscribing to the Our Pensai newsletter. I would recommend doing that anyway, because uh, I not create it, so it's a very good newsletter. And you uh, should connect with other users to um, exchange ideas and, and questions. So now the orderly package by Rich Fitzjohn. So here the challenge is a bit different. What if you are writing a report about the situation of the pandemic in your region, and this report is used for making decisions for making decision? It's very important in that case that you keep track of everything that has gone into your analysis at different point in time. So that if in one month from now someone is doing an audit, then or yourself is doing an audit of, of what you've done in the past, you can see what you have done in the past and you and with orderly you can even combine the like you can make an analysis of the analysis so so that's the idea uh, behind orderly so how does it work so in orderly uh, vocabulary you have repos and in repos you have reports they are called reports but then they are not necessarily reports so it could be a script that generates the figures and there is no report involved but anyway, I've made an example of a repo that has one report in it. So I was in an existing R Studio project. I run the orderly init function and I created the blob repo. So blob is not an informative name, but that's the one I used. And then I created a report inside, inside of the blob repo by using the orderly new function. And I added two uh, files from the uh, orderly documentation to have some sort of minimal example. So what I had was a blob folder with a general configuration, orderly config.yaml. That one I didn't need to edit to make things work. So it can be useful in some cases, but you don't necessarily have to uh, edit that one. And then there is the as lc folder, so the source folder with the example folder. So this is my report. And my report is very simple. It, it's only an orderly configuration, that one I need, and a script. So what is the, in the orderly configuration? So it can remind you of the targets.r file because it describes many, many things. So it describes the script that has to be run and it describes the artifacts that my script is creating. So the artifacts are static graph and data. Each of them is described by words like a graph of things and by a file name. And the script in that case is a very simple one. So it generates random data you, um, in a data frame. It writes this data frame to uh, a file, my data or CSV, and it makes a plot of the data. So how do I run the project? How do I go from the script to the result? So first, in some cases, because in, with uh, orderly, for instance, the, the report is it the subfolder, subfolder, subfolder. Uh, it might be hard to. Uh, write the code, so you might want to experiment with the development mode that puts everything inside the current uh, session. Then once you are uh, fairly happy with what, what you've written, you can create a draft version of your report by using the orderly run function. And what this does is that it runs the analysis and it puts everything, so a copy of the input and output, in a folder inside the draft folder. So it's in draft example and some um, ID that's based on uh, the time at which it was computed and a hash, I think, of the analysis. So this is a draft folder. If you're really happy with uh, what you've done and you want to save this, you uh, use the orderly commit function. So commit is the same verb as when using git. So when you use the orderly commit uh, function, it puts a version of the analysis inside the archive folder. So your um, archive example and then some ID for the for this version. So something that, that is important to say here is that um, when you use orderly, maybe you have a huge uh, analysis. So you are not expected to track archive and draft with Git, but with something else. You might need to have some sort of backup with your server or something like that. 
So how to get started with, with Orderly? So the Orderly documentation website is really great. So when you read it, I think that you can really see that it has been used for real, like there, is, there are real people using the Orderly uh, package and um, the Orderly documentation shows how their experience has been used to improve both the package and the documentation. I would recommend starting small to understand how it works because like it's again, like with targets, uh, you read all oh, pieces fits together, pipelines, and it's the same with orderly, like the idea of archive folder, draft folder, it's all much clearer when you run it once. And I would also recommend uh, connecting with other users. And how to keep it, because as target orderly is actively developed, so you could watch orderly GitHub repository, you could follow the blog of the team that develops orderly. And it's actually a good blog to follow in general because we have uh, really great blog posts about R and programming in general. And you could follow Rich Fitzjohn on Twitter. So to conclude this section, how to run your project. So if you have only one or a few R Markdown reports, maybe you can use the knit button or the R Markdown render function. If you want to optimize the pipeline, I'd recommend um, checking out the targets package. And if you want to keep track of all version of the analysis for future audits, for instance, uh, the orderly package is a great package. And there are other tools that, uh, that can help you create your, um, your uh, running your project and you could even create yours. And what's important also to say is that in uh, this talk, I've presented the idea of the file structure and how to run your project as separate concerns. And I've presented packages uh, here that are not opinionated about the file structure. Sometimes you will find R packages that uh, help you do both, create the structure and run the project, and that are, the, that are quite strict in how uh, you structure your, your project. So. So to conclude the talk uh, in general, first, I wanted to thank the organization team of Saturday in Nairobi. It was a pleasure to, uh, to be invited and to um, to emit uh, some of you. And I also want to thank uh, Christophe Dervieux who reviewed the blog post I wrote with the content uh, of his talk. Uh, so how do you draw a project? So it's important to know the good basics like isolating your project, having backups. It's important to encapsulate the project, for instance, with the run package to not uh, have your script broken by package updates. Um, your, the file structure of your project should be practical, consistent, and hopefully automatic. It doesn't need to look like a package. And uh, I would recommend using tools for building outputs that are um, adapted to your needs, like for instance, optimizing a pipeline. Uh, I've, put, I've listed some more resources on how to learn how to do a, a project. Uh, so, and to really summarize in even less words, you should read everything that Jenny Bryan wrote. Um, you should create, uh, choose or even create like uh, with your teammates, if you have teammates, like the box in which you put and build your projects, so what file structure and what package, package do you use. And you should not be afraid to renew your tool set over time because your, your uh, taste and your needs will change. There will be new tools out there. But the good news is that if you are attending a, a conference, an art conference, you are probably not afraid uh, to learn new things. So that's all from me. Thank you. Somebody asked, "What is the use of the data file?" Sorry, sorry. Can you can you repeat the R data file? Yeah, yeah you, you at some point you said that the R dot uh, dot R data file is not very really much useful. But no, somebody, yeah, but what is its use? Yeah, I don't know because I only uh, I only know that we shouldn't use that. Like I've never used a dot R data file content myself. Like maybe, yeah, maybe for some workflow it used to be a, a good idea, mm -hmm. but yeah, I don't use it at all. Okay. Uh, on package uh, on uh, project management with Ren, right? how does Ren handle package installation in the case of uh, project sharing when the uh, library for the packages is not within the project folder? I hope you get it. So when what for the package is not inside the project folder? Yeah, when your package uh, library is not inside the project folder, how does uh, Renv uh, handle the installation? So with Renv, you, you always have one package library per project. So it okay. really, yeah. 
like it has something central with a, a cache like, like if you are installing for instance if you are installing a package for a project and it has already been installed for another project on your computer it should be faster mm -hmm. but you still have like one library per project wow, okay. so i'm not sure i understood the question yeah i think well. that's the question because uh, it's, uh, when you're sharing your projects but when you but I'm when you're yes yeah so but I, well, yeah and something i need to uh, specify is you have one library per project but when you share the project with someone else you don't share the library of packages running the run restore function will install the package otherwise things will would be too big to to share okay so in, in that case uh, yeah it is the Sorry, Mochiso, we are losing you. Please speak near to the microphone. Sorry, I'm asking. In this case, if you share with the with the log file, the rend.log, does uh, rend install the most recent package version or the no. one that is in log? The one that are in rend.log. Okay, okay. Yeah. Nice. And then the last question is how do you keep up to date with our news? <laughs> So uh, there are several ways to do that. So Twitter would be one, but Twitter can be overwhelming. Like a very good way to get started with that is uh, subscribing to the Our Weekly newsletter. Oh. And the Our Open Science newsletter, of course. <laughs> Both of them. And then uh, I think uh, that's it. Uh, somebody is asking, please, can I use this uh, to clone uh, from the, please, can I use this to clone a res re repository from GitHub. So we, which which package? Uh, use this. I think it's, it's talking about this. It's not clear. The question is not clear from. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so there are functions in use this to help you. So there is one that's called create from GitHub. Yeah. And that's the one that would clone a repository. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that's it. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mael, for the uh, keynote presentation. Thank you for sharing the session, gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> encourage you to stretch to uh, five minutes or probably less, after which we'll have the last workshop on customizing uh, markdown by Dr. Mael or Lina. Please refer to the mail this was sent to you yesterday for the respective buildings. Uh, enjoy your sessions. Bye. Bye.